Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral Church of All Saints on this first day of a new year, 2023. We gather this morning to share in Eucharist. We're using our 930 worship space if it looks unfamiliar to you on camera. A reminder that next Sunday we return to our format of services at 930 and 11 and weekday services, 7.30 a.m. on Wednesdays, a noon hour Eucharist on Fridays, and is meditation back on Wednesday? Carmen? We'll say yes. Yes. <laughs> meditation Wednesday in the Great Hall at noon. Otherwise, you can find us online Monday through Saturday. We offer a service of morning prayer at 6.30 in the morning. And Wednesdays around the noon hour, we offer an update on announcements and a poem, a prayer, and a song to get you through the week. So welcome. Our service today may be found on the cathedral's website. And we begin our worship with a territorial acknowledgement. We gather in this cathedral on ground that is the ancestral territory of peoples who were here long before the European settlers crossed the ocean. We gather here in and from the Cathedral Church of All Saints in Halifax, Nova Scotia, located on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. And our opening hymn this morning, hymn 375, at the name of Jesus. those in house this morning, you have two leaflets, one that contains the service, the other that has the particular prayers for this day. So as we gather this morning, let us join together in these opening sentences. Your love is as high as the heavens, O God. Your faithfulness soars through the skies. Your righteousness reaches the tower of peace. Your mercy is death at the sea. We shelter beneath your wings. We feast on the food you provide. We open our eyes to drink in your goodness. 
for you are the source of all life, and because of your light, we see life. And the colic prayer for today on the insert. Let us pray together. Eternal One, you gave your incarnate Son the holy name of Jesus to be a sign of salvation. Plant in every heart the love of the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And please be seated for our readings. Let us prepare ourselves for the word of God as it comes to us in the reading of Holy Scripture. Our hearts and and minds minds are open. A letter from, a reading from the letter to the Philippians. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn, hymn 306, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing.
The shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. First of all, let me say how wonderful it is to be here with you all as we celebrate the beginning of a new calendar year. My husband sends his regrets. He is recovering from this flu that has uh, beset so many of us. I had it earlier in the season, uh, so I'm glad that I could celebrate Christmas without that, but he would like to be here um, and sends his regards. And I hope you'll be able to stay afterwards for some conversation and some simple refreshments, which are not as simple as I had imagined. It sounded all so, you know, (laughs) like it wouldn't be any trouble. And it all looks so lovely up there. So this is on behalf of the Cathedral Elves, who continue their ministry long after Christmas Day. So please stay if you can and enjoy some lovely cookies and uh, coffee or tea. On this date in the church calendar, we celebrate a feast called the Holy Name of Jesus, or the Naming of Jesus. And we're almost in sync with the biblical story as we move eight days after the birth of Jesus to his presentation in the temple, in keeping with Jewish law and custom at that time for ritual circumcision and a naming ceremony. And I have to admit, it seems rather ironic that I'm here preaching on a Sunday that celebrates the naming of Jesus, given that when our first child was born, my husband and I struggled to find a name for her. Or perhaps I should say we struggled to find what we thought would be the right name, we hoped would be the right name for her. 
You see, we thought that this name was likely to be with her for the rest of her life. That isn't always the case, but we thought at that time it might be and it would be. So we knew it was important to take the time to think about this, to reflect, to consider who she is and what name would best personify uh, her. Lots of people around us provided input. We had lots of suggestions, mm -hmm. names they liked, names they didn't like, and why. And none of that was terribly helpful in the end. We tried to filter it all out, in fact. And we also experimented with names, you know, carrying her around in the hospital, calling her Hannah or Sophie. Um, and while those are really lovely names, they just didn't seem right for our daughter, who, interestingly enough, on the eighth day, was given the name Emma Olive. We thought if it was good enough for Jesus, she could handle waiting eight days without a name. Now, if you do a Google search, uh, you'll find that Emma was the most popular girl's name in 2002, and that might have been part of our problem. It sort of put us off for a while in making that choice, but in the end, my husband reminded me of all of this recently, but in the end, we decided that this name seemed to be the name for her. Now, any of us who've chosen names, whether for our children or our pets or even ourselves, know that naming is often a sacred act of love. And I say often because a few funny examples came to mind as I was thinking about this theme. I remember a couple who stayed with us once who kept chickens. And shockingly, I learned, they named them all. But being a bit of a city girl at the time, I was surprised to learn that they ate their chickens. And I remember saying to them, quite astonished, how can you eat something you've named? Well, quickly one of them replied, well, we name them things like Parmigiana and Cacciatore. <laughs> I thought, well, that would make it slightly easier rather than Frank or whatever. I also remember a friend who was so sad after her beloved cat died that she swore she'd never have another pet. But they had mice, and they decided that having a cat was the most effective way to deal with that problem. So she named the cat Implement, determined to see it only for its function. But before long, when I met Implement, Implement was impy. And you can imagine the rest. Impy was no longer just an implement known for its function, but a beloved part of the family. They just get us every time. <laughs> Naming can foster relationship with the person or the creature being named, although it can also define that relationship or try to define that relationship or keep it at a distance. Some of us will likely remember unkind nicknames from grade school, names we were given as a way to try to define us, perhaps based on some personal characteristic or another. One of my Christmas gifts this year was the book Where the Crawdads Sing, and in it, author Delia Owens presents the life story of Catherine Danielle Clark, or Kaya, who is abandoned by her family at a young age to survive on her own in the marshlands of North Carolina. Isolated and alone without a loving family to nurture and guide her, Kaya does her best to create a life and builds relationships with the gulls and creatures of the marsh as well as the marsh itself. To those in nearby communities, she's known simply as the marsh girl and they don't mean it kindly. She's seen as a strange and curious oddity, perhaps someone to be feared, defined by where she lives. She is different, and so she is to be avoided and excluded. She simply doesn't fit in. In a particularly poignant moment in the book, one of the characters names this injustice for what it is, asking the other community members a question that might haunt any one of us long afterwards and give us cause for reflection. Did we exclude Miss Clark because she was different, or was she different because we excluded her? There's a lot packed into that question. For about half of the book, Kaya doesn't even know her full name or the full names of her parents or siblings. 
Learning her own name is a step towards claiming an identity that is based not on how others see her or the limits they've placed on her, but on who she really is and who she is becoming, a person, a confident woman in her own right with gifts and talents and abilities. In a sense, some of that is also the case with Jesus. While we don't usually have the benefit of angels to guide us in choosing names for our children, the gospel writer Luke suggests that Mary did. And so at the time of his presentation in the temple, we learn that his name is Jesus, just as the angel Gabriel said it would be, a name that means God saves. If we understand in the word saves the concept of healing or making things whole, like the salve or salve that we put on uh, as an ointment when we have cuts or other injuries, we'll see that this name, Jesus saves, God saves, is laden with possibility and hope. It puts a different perspective on the need for accepting the name of Jesus as a way towards a kind of personal salvation and reminds us that his life was about so much more than that. It was about restoring right relationship between people and God, among and between people whose differences led to division, and indeed even right relationship with all of creation. It was about reconciling differences and naming whatever got in the way of that reconciliation. While some were anticipating the Messiah, another name for Jesus, to be a kind of warrior king, he comes instead as a vulnerable baby. His birth announced to humble shepherds who, after their encounter with the angels and the holy family, can't wait to share this good news with all who would hear. This God who comes to us in Jesus has a name that we can know and say out loud, a name that invites us into relationship with a God who loves us and wants us to be whole, a God who wants us to be in right relationship with God, with one another, with the planet. As one writer says, Jesus is the embodiment of the promise of God, or what God's promise looks like in the flesh, a promise we can see, not a concept or an abstract idea, but a living, breathing human being. As I was reflecting on that, I couldn't help but wonder what it means that we, as followers of Jesus, have taken on the name of Christian in our baptism and made baptismal promises to live the way of love that Jesus practiced, modeled, and taught. As this new calendar year begins and we see the many challenges that face us and our planet, I pray that we might claim that identity so that we can continue to be part of Jesus' work of healing and making things whole. May we live into the name of Jesus that is part of our spiritual DNA, trusting that God, who has begun a good work in us, will continue it until its completion. Thanks be to God. Amen. Turning to our service bulletin, we share together in an affirmation of belief. As you are able, we encourage you to stand. That we worship one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in whose image we are made, to whose service we are summoned, by whose presence we are renewed. This we believe, that it is central to the mission of Christ, that we participate through word and action 
to rejoice in the diversity of human culture, to preserve the earth in all its beauty and frailty, to witness to the love of God for every person, and to invite all to share in that converting experience. Yes, yes we believe. That through the power of the Holy Spirit, the persecuted shall be lifted up and the wicked will fall. The heartfelt prayers and hidden actions of God's people shall change for good the course of human history. The ancient words of scripture shall continue to startle us with fresh insight. Yes, this we believe. believe. That God has called the church into being, to be the servant of the kingdom, to be a sign of God's new order, to celebrate in every land worship which raises our hearts to heaven. Yes, yes we believe. That Christ, fully aware of our differences, prays that we may be one so that the world may believe. This we believe, and to this we are committed, for the love of God, in the way of Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Everlasting God, at the start of a new year, we may find ourselves apprehensive for what it might bring. Reassure us with your loving presence that whatever we might experience in the coming 12 months will not be more than we can bear, and that you will never be more than a prayer away. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Linda, our primate, Sandra, our bishop, our wardens, Mayan and Zachary, for Paul, our rector and dean, Helen, our associate priest, our deacons, Ray, Heather, and Maggie, Jillian, our engagement leader, our associated parish of St. James in Herring Cove, uh, Paul, Nick, Russ, Pauline, and all who make music in this place, and all others who minister here in so many ways, both lay and ordained. Creator God, Help us to know and to understand what it means and what it takes to make disciples and so help to transform the world. May this new year bring peace to those parts of the world where it has been absent for far too long, especially in the Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the sick in their hour of need especially if the new year fills them with doubts and fears. May they be aware of your presence holding them and encouraging them. We pray especially for Stephanie, Leslie, Ed, Elizabeth, Susan, Victoria, Navia, Maureen, Dawn, Diane, Kara, Bob, Laura, Mia, Linda, any known to you alone, a louder in the silence of your heart. We encourage them toward healing and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, as we remember before you those who will not journey into this new year, we thank you for the gift of hope beyond death that you have given us throughout our lives, death and resurrection through your son. Today we remember Kendall and Pope Benedict. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new, and so we thank you for this new year and for all the potential it holds. Move us every single morning throughout 2023 to look forward to the future with hope and to give you thanks for the wonders of your creation and the wonderful gifts that you have given us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy God, maker of all, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. Jesus Christ, servant of the poor, 
Have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, breath of life. Have mercy on us. In silence, let us confess our faults and admit our frailty. And together, before God, we confess to our brokenness, to the ways we wound our lives, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Preparing our altar for Eucharist, our hymn is 69, We Who Live by Sound and Symbol. Prayer over the gifts you will find printed in today's insert. In offering these gifts, we offer ourselves in loving service. And so we pray. Good and loving God, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have blessed us with your gifts, let them be a blessing for us with the trees of the field, with all earth and heaven, we shout for joy at the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we return to the service booklet. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to God. It is right right to give our thanks thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O God, for you have brought forth bread from the earth. 
Blessed are you, O God, for you have created the fruit of the vine. In the beginning you watered the earth that man and woman might have food and drink. You gave your servant Sarah bread to strengthen her family on their journey and wine to make them glad. You called Moses and his people out of bondage and refreshed them with food in the wilderness. You gave Mary and Jesus their daily bread to share. And here at your table, you offer us bread and wine for the journey to nourish us as sons and daughters. And so, with all our sisters and brothers, our siblings before us and beside us, we praise you for your unending greatness as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of love and light, heaven and earth are full of your light. Glory to you, our God. Blessed is he. Blessed are we. Blessed are all who come to your light. Glory to you, our God. Among friends gathered around a table, Jesus took bread, and having blessed it, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. In the same way, he took wine, and having given thanks for it, he poured it out and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new relationship with God, made possible through my death. Take this and share it to remember me. Now, following Jesus' example, we take this bread and this wine the ordinary things of the world through which God will bless us. Lord Jesus Christ, pre present with us now, as we do in this place what you did in an upstairs room, breathe your spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine. May they become for us your body, vibrant with your life, healing, renewing, and making us whole. And as the bread and wine which we now eat and drink are changed into us, may we be changed again into you, bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh, loving and caring in the world. Blessing, honor, and glory be yours, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Look, the body of Christ is broken for the life of the world. Here, Here is Christ coming to us. And these are the gifts of God. For the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
join us around the table.
Let us pray. Sharing together in the prayer after communion. Good and loving God, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have blessed us with your gifts, let them be a blessing for others. With the trees of the field, with all earth and heaven, we should sing for joy at the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As you have been fed at this table, go to feed the hungry. As you have been set free, go to set free the imprisoned. As you have received, give. As you have heard, proclaim. And the blessing which you have received from God, Creator, Son, and Spirit, go with you. Amen. Amen. And as our closing hymn, hymn 321.
gratitude for this moment, this meal, these people, we give ourselves to you. Take us out to live as changed people because we have shared the living bread and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us, expect much from us, enable much by us, encourage many through us. Amen. We leave this worship to serve God. Thank you for joining us. Do move up to the Christmas tree area where there is coffee, tea, cookies, and an opportunity to chat, mix, mingle, celebrate the new year, all of those things. Thank you.